It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BC TV's, there we go, right there, nightly news roundup. I'm Roland Boyd, normally alongside Joe Bushy tonight. It's just me, but I will mention that I'm wearing my lucky shirt and my lucky vest. Uh, it's of, I think, no consequence that they don't really go together. I'm hoping their joint luck will help me uh, propel through kind of a, a ragtag Monday show. Uh, in the meantime, though, I can tell you what we've got uh, coming up up on deck tonight we'll talk about ron staley who just won a big award uh some trouble for vermont state police uh, officer uh, stationed in brattleboro and then the nrc's got uh, a big safety assessment hearing coming up we'll hear a little bit about that um uh, tonight and then uh, we'll prep for our big show on wednesday which uh, i've just heard we're going to go live from we'll do uh, one to two uh, questions from there via skype uh, that'll be on Wednesday's show. We'll be right back here, 5.45 p.m., live on BC TV Channel 8. And as always, we like to do this one in 15 minutes, so I'll queue up our brand new 5.45 live intro. Make sure you stick with us. Here we are at the Stakeout Restaurant. It's the last night they're open. It's also Mother's Day. Kathy's enjoying <clears throat> the last vestiges of cookies and cream and maple walnut ice cream that were scraped out of the bottom of the ice cream barrels. <clears throat> the staff seems somewhat despondent because they only found out yesterday that this place was closing. And this is what it looks like. Welcome back to this March, March, May 21st, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden, and I'll be taking you through all the way to the 6 o'clock news when you can uh, flip over to Brian Williams. All right, uh, we'll start off there with footage shot by BCTV uh, Access Coordinator Frederick Noyes on the... Uh, Close to the last moment the stakeout restaurant in Brattleboro was ever open. That was Mother's Day, uh, now a week ago from yesterday when they closed without warning uh, at midnight on uh, what would have been last Monday. Uh, they sent out a Facebook blast to all their Facebook friends and subscribers uh, telling them that they would not reopen. There were, in fact, employees that showed up Monday morning unaware that they were unable to work. Um, now the community has been pulling together around them, no surprise, in a, a rock-bottom economy that's swept through uh, this county. Um, but uh, for those of you who might have a gift certificate wondering what's going on there, I know hard to think of yourself, but that's my MO, so uh, if I had a gift certificate, that's the first thing I would think about. The Marina Restaurant, uh, showing a little community spirit, uh, is planning to honor any stakeout gift certificates. So. Uh, very cool on that front. All right, uh, we'll move on here. I've got a new uh, array of screens all around me, so if my eyes dart around here, it's uh, only because I'm trying to check our teleprompter screen, our Comcast cable feed, our giant LCD, the LCD behind me, and then I've also got Joe's teleprompter kind of distracting me over there. Here's the screen for our new switcher, and here's my laptop, which is showing us uh, some traffic behind us. We'll get to that in a sec. Now you know why I'm so scattered here, or I, I hope I've given you a little insight. All right, moving on. Uh, the Vermont State Trooper who allegedly assaulted two men over a stolen canoe has resigned after being put under investigation by the Vermont Attorney General. El Eric Howley, a 40-year-old state trooper operating out of the Brattleboro Barracks, was placed on, on administrative leave on April 8th. The day that witnesses at uh, Lake Raponda reported that Wilmington police, two Wilmington police, that Howley attacked 21-year-old Atten Pike and 21-year-old Mark Ellison after accusing them of stealing his canoe. Howley, who had been assigned to the Brattleboro Barracks since 2009, is also accused of beating a man after responding to a call at a wedding reception. And while no official charges were brought against him then, the state settled uh, with the victim of that case for uh, $135,000. All right, uh, and with that, we'll move right on. We'll get back to this camera just to shake it up a little since I'm the only one here. Normally, we'd flip over to my uh, good friend Joe Bushy, who'll be back with me Wednesday. Um, and we've got uh, some more stuff that uh, I'll talk about in just a little bit. But first, uh, our next story, Wyndham Southeast Superintendent Ron Staley has been chosen to be the Vermont Superintendent of the Year. Staley received the award uh, Thursday at the Vermont Superintendent Annual Meeting. 
Something he told the Brattleboro Reformer was a complete surprise. In announcing the word, the BSA said Staley is a statewide leader in promoting programs that extend beyond general education. Staley serves as the regional chairman for the Vermont Superintendents Association and was on the state licensing board for teachers for four years. So uh, there's our next story here. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, as we speak, 545 Live uh, content specialist Ian Keel is uh, up at the BUHS board where they're going to do a little thing for Staley. We'll get that footage for you Wednesday along with all the other cool stuff I've been amping up already. All right, next, uh, despite a uh, recent study that uh, put Vermont as one of the safest states in the nation for pedestrian and cyclist safety, a slew of pedestrian auto accidents that have uh, been somewhat high, high profile uh, since dating all the way back to December has uh, put pedestrian safety in the forefront with town officials meeting uh, with police and uh, various members from the state to discuss um, how they can make roadways around town safer in honor of those uh, who have either lost their lives or been seriously injured in this rash of accidents. Um, folks from the Brattleboro and surrounding communities uh, met at the Common uh, over the weekend to, uh, well, ride, ride their bikes, walk in safety, and talk about what it uh, means to be safe on all fronts. Uh, how do they stay safe? Well, they got an escort from the Brattleboro uh, Police Department. Not too shabby. Let's take a look. The big thing about this is that we're trying to raise awareness for bike safety and also for driver also, safety. Cyclists also have to be careful of cars, so. Bob Imler uh, was kind enough to uh, let us use some of his footage. You can find that complete video on HD on YouTube uh, by searching uh, Ride of Silence. Is that what it's called? Yes, indeed it is. All right, uh, just a few things before we wrap up our stories for today. Of course, we talked about that NRC forum that's uh, going to be, we're going to go live to via Skype on Wednesday, annual safety assessment hearing. Um, we've got uh, some folks from Safe and Green who will be handling the live uh, Skype call on the other end uh, to explain uh, what the story is here. Let's see if I can rock and roll it. Hi. Join us for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission open house and public hearing to discuss the safety of Vermont Yankee owned and operated by Intergy Nuclear. It's this coming Wednesday, May 23rd. The open house is at 5.30. And the public meeting is at 7 o'clock, and they're both in the multipurpose room at Brattleboro Union High School. So bring your tough questions and come on down and join us. Safe and Green Campaign will be there. Sage Alliance will be there. See you there. All right, uh, moving on. Sad note for 545 Live here. We scored big when we got a hardworking intern, Nolan Edgar from Leland and Gray, picking up some credits uh, just before graduation as part of their community co-op program. He rolled into town and quickly learned how to piece together all these ridiculous segments, uh, those fancy graphics you sometimes see at the beginning, like that one with the big arrow. He's always picking uh, the stories for us, culling through the news and YouTube, looking at the governor's channel, all that kind of stuff. He's been invaluable here. The bad news, uh, he's done. He's put in the uh, required time and uh, sealed the deal for us. But uh, I wanted to just take a moment to throw in a little Nolan highlight reel so all of y'all can see uh, what he's been doing behind the scenes. This is the Union Station project for the town of Brattleboro. I'm 84. Okay. I'm 85. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> why, are you, why are you guys selling lemonade? I'm 85. All right, here's the script from uh, our hard work and intern, Nolan Edgar, who's been looking through the news here today to make it look like I can reel all this stuff uh, off the top of my head. In the first year, we raised like $13,000 and helped like 30 families. I feel like I should be filming you, like filming me for a second, just so we. Hold on. Yeah. This, this is our teleprompter, high-tech teleprompter. 
All right, and we're back a little bit from Nolan Edgar. What have I got there as I squint at the screen behind me? 555.01. Nice. We've got uh, just a little time left to look at some downtown traffic on this Monday. If you're uh, getting ready to leave the workplace or the gym where I found out you can uh, tune in BCTV if you're at uh, outer limits, say you're trying to figure out how to head home, or uh, maybe you're going to call your spouse, tell them how they're going to get home. We've got a way to look at the downtown traffic. Um, this is powered by Inrix and Beat the Traffic. And uh, we're going to take a look at the downtown area. The code red, standstill traffic, orange, high volume, but moving and green means you are flying. Now, normally Putney Road in the orange. So I just want to point out that today they are, in fact, um, in the green, which is really pretty exciting to actually see something different on the screen here as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we've also got uh, a little bit of red in downtown. No surprises here as uh, I zoom through um, High Street to uh, Malfunction Junction there, a rough area. So um, if you're thinking uh, of heading back, you really have two choices, 91 Putney Road. Uh, you're good to go Canal Street, Western Ave in the orange, so feel free to take them, but uh, don't expect to uh, go uh, speeding through. Doing a little George Jones maybe another day when we've got some green down there as well. All right, that's our high-tech traffic report. It's powered by Inrix and Beat the Traffic. Um, we've got just a few things left uh, before we uh, head off here for the day. I just want to promote uh, a couple things coming up this week. Uh, on Friday, we have uh, Poetry Slam Diversity Day. Uh, that's coming up on Friday at BUHS. We're going to get a little bit of that, courtesy of BUHS TV. And uh, Arsenic and Old Lace from the Vermont Theatre Company goes back on uh, for you there. Uh, so that's about all I got here uh, as we wind down this Ragtag Monday show. So I'll just throw in my spiel here as I queue up uh, our end credits. That's probably this button here that gets that on deck. All right, uh, thanks to everybody that makes uh, 545 Live tick the way it does. Vlasta Papelka, who was out last week, uh, we are so glad that she's back. She's kind of the glue that holds this all together. Joe and I uh, lack certain uh, capacities in the focus area. She's got uh, plenty to go around. She keeps us whipped into shape. It was a rough week without her last week. Vlasta, thanks for checking in with us. Nolan, uh, it's been great having you. Um, that uh, highlight reel doesn't even do justice to all the work you've done. Content specialist Paige Martin, who worked so hard uh, advising and uh, helping pick footage for that cool new intro with the slow motion and the running and the pigeons. Ian Keel, who's uh, filming for us as we speak up at BUHS. Maria Dominguez, who works so hard uh, providing footage for us uh, all for free. And of course, my co-captain, Joe Bushy, who only gets about two hours of sleep uh, and thanks largely to his dedication to this show. Uh, you all make it uh, work. That's enough chit chat for me. In fact, probably uh, at least 10 seconds too much chit chat. So thanks for checking in. We'll be back Wednesday, BCTV Channel 8. That's this here channel that you're watching now. Uh, you can find this show uh, on brattlebrotv.org later if you need to refresh on a couple details. It's in HD. If you're watching on YouTube, click the gear wheel down there. That's uh, all I got to say. So, night, everybody.